What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Sunday, October 9th, 2022 date. And it is about 7.36 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.6 over here. Right around the, uh, looks like the Mediterranean area. Let's go ahead and check out uh, some activity on the sun first. As far as solar weather activity goes, we did see an M flare kick up here just a little bit ago. Uh, a very small M flare, 1.1 to be exact. That one came from Sunspot uh, 3112, which is the large sunspot within this area, which is kind of facing away from Earth currently. Um, it did have a shot at uh, getting this with a bullseye type uh, setup, but um, it never did really produce anything significant. Uh, it looks like it may have just sparked off a little M flare. Uh, we are getting a pretty good cluster of mixes here, including a newly named Sunspot 3120 joining in on the Sunspot train, so to speak. Uh, a very large Sunspot uh, if you look at it as a whole, but uh, not a whole lot of potential for any X-Class flares currently. 3119 is continuing to grow. Uh, we'll watch that in the coming days as uh, time goes on. Looks like a G1-Class storm has been forecasted. For tonight's time frame, it looks like, although conditions currently below that threshold at about KP index of 4, we would need a 5 to get into that G1 class storm category. For now, uh, that is forecasted. We'll see if that rings true uh, throughout the evening. All right, earthquake activity. Uh, looking at some movement kicking up here along the Aleutian Trench today. This is the uh, four point or uh, 2.5 and above for the states. Latest earthquake shows a 4.6 off the coast of the Sandpoint, Alaska area along the Aleutian Trench right there. Some other fours through the Cook Inlet area. Overall, seismic activity kind of on the increase up here on the northern end of the Pacific Plate. The interaction there with the North American Plate. Up here in Washington, uh, a little bit of activity kicking up once again. Just outside of the Strait of Juan de Fuca, we had one of these earthquakes coming in earlier this morning. Also, uh, looks like uh, one came in in the afternoon time frame as well 1.6 so a little bit of deeper movement earthquakes up there kicking up off the coast of washington got one earthquake here very uh and somewhat there close to the cascadia megathrust area 2.6 now i'm not certain if i seen that this morning or not far as the update goes uh kind of a an interesting earthquake at 19 kilometers deep for that 2.6 off the coast of Northern California, very close to the Cascadia Megathrust area. Uh, one earthquake outside of Mount Shasta, about, uh, eh, it looks like about 10 miles or so to the northeast of 1.2. Very shallow earthquake out there in the mountains. All right, rest of California, a little activity around the Calaveras and the Hayward Fault System there in the Bay Area. Not a whole lot of significant movement throughout this area of, of the state today. Uh, and also down here in Southern California, not a whole lot of movement around the San Andreas Fault. Got a little bit of activity still continuing where that three-pointer struck yesterday. Some aftershock sequences there occurring just off of the Elsinore Fault System. That's going to be this fault system right here. Uh, also off the coast of San Diego, 1.7 coming in uh, earlier this afternoon time frame. The rest of the country, a little spotty activity through Oklahoma, Texas. And the New Madrid zone, I believe this is an older movement earthquake there from last night. Also some activity along the Appalachia Mountains there. One of those, at least uh, today, was a 2.5 at 8.1 kilometers earlier this afternoon time frame there. Let's see what else we got. South America, not a whole lot going on. Uh, we haven't seen too much activity ramping up here along this region following the five-pointer that kicked, or six-pointer that kicked off. Uh, in the central mid-Atlantic ridge earlier uh, today. Kind of a, a larger earthquake, but I uh, uh, haven't really seen too much adjustment following that movement. One area, though, that we have seen is over here along the western Pacific and the western portion of the Philippine Plate, all getting in on quite a bit of action. We're seeing... Uh, some movement down into the Japan Trench, also the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, all four of these uh, in the four-pointer range. The largest one was a 4.9 there, just off the coast of Japan. Uh, so kind of watching that area pretty closely. It's been a while since we've seen any major movement here 
along the Curl Kamachaka Trench. I know it's building up. Just a matter of when uh, that's going to take place. It's actually one of the highest accumulated stress rate areas in the world along the uh, Pacific Plate. Okay, let's see down here uh, around the Manila area. Looks like most of this movement here was from earlier this morning. Not a whole lot of renewed uptick there. Uh, one earthquake around the Papua New Guinea area, 5.4. That one kicking up earlier this afternoon time frame, about 10 kilometers. And uh, there was a 5.0 earthquake there near Fiji. Very shallow earthquake, though. Um, up just kind of north of Fiji area at uh, about 10 kilometers or so. And this movement down here around the Tonga area, uh, some deeper activity. But that was from earlier this morning time frame. The Big Island. Let's check out the Big Island, see what we got here in Hawaii. As far as earthquake activity goes, a little bit of movement up in the Mauna Loa area once again and also near Pahala. I'm going to go ahead and check out the hazard notification system here from the USGS. In regards to the um, ongoing activity there at Kilauea and Mauna Loa, they're now doing daily updates uh, on both those volcanoes. Of course, Kilauea, the uh, eruption continues. All recent eruptive activity has been confined to the crater. It's been saying this for many months now. No significant changes have been observed at the summit or either rift zone. Go ahead and go down to the Mauna Loa area. Still sits at an advisory and a yellow aviation color code. Mauna Loa is currently not erupting and there are no signs of an imminent eruption at this time. However, Mauna Loa continues to be in a state and height of unrest as indicated by increased earthquake activity and inflation of the summit. And of course, they mentioned here about renewed input of magma kicking up down there about two to five miles uh, below the surface. Looks like during the past 24 hours, HVO located over three dozen small magnitude below 3.0 earthquakes, two to three miles deep um, and four to five miles beneath the upper elevation northwest flank of Mauna Loa. That's over the last 24 hours. Uh, both of these regions have historically been seismically active during periods of unrest at Mauna Loa. So things still continuing there at uh, on the Big Island. I do want to key up and look at the most recent um, seismograph station here in the area of the Big Island there at Mauna Loa. Um, let's see here. Stand by for just a second. And quite a bit of seismograph stations here in GPS measurements, but uh, kind of want to get one of these here and see what we got for localized seismic activity. This is the last 24 hours of uh, earthquake activity reported there at the Mauna Loa region. So it looks like swarms still continue in there. Very localized earthquakes here and the very sharp, well-defined spikes. And no signs of harmonic tremor or anything like that. Doesn't look like the magnitudes are increasing or decreasing currently. They're just kind of staying the same far as the magnitudes and the multitudes of quakes there around Mauna Loa. Definitely keep an eye on that. The tremor activity tonight uh, along the Cascadia. Well, we're, we're just jumping up in numbers. Almost 1,000 epicenters t tonight. Or over the last 24 hours, I should say, the last UTC time. That's a lot of activity there, folks. Quite a bit. And it kind of looks like uh, it's centered once again around the Oregon area. Although we are getting the, uh, looks like they're filling in a little bit here in Northern California and up there around Seattle and Washington as well. But most of the trimmer uh, confined there to the Oregon area. And this has been an ongoing thing here for about a week or so now. And uh, mostly confined to this area. We haven't really seen too much uh, adjustment up here. Just a trimmer. And uh, basically what trimmer is, is uh, the Juan de Fuca plate here moving slowly underneath this area not up here where the locked area is this is the locked area off offshore uh, the Cascadia subduction zone itself sits offshore about 50 60 miles or so but the trimmer occurs down there underneath the land underneath the uh, Oregon at 35 45 kilometers deep down there uh, and then of course it, it continues to go deep deeper deeper into the mantle area and, uh, of course, you get into the volcanoes and whatnot further east here. But the trimmer uh, is definitely ramping up. I don't see any type of surface quakes going on. Sometimes we do see activity kicking up when we see this trimmer activity um, kind of like on a large scale like we're seeing. 
but I'm not seeing any noticeable earthquake activity up here at the surface levels, but it's something to watch, keep in mind here in the coming days. But that's a lot of tremor activity for one day. Almost 1,000 epicenters of tremor. That's something you would see maybe over a couple day uh, time span. But uh, things are kicking up. And I've been looking at this map up here, or this graph um, of the tremor map. And this is, goes back to about 2010 or so. And uh, hopefully you guys can see that. We'll make it a little bit larger there so you guys can see. Um, just if you look at these intervals, it looks like we have periods of about a year or so where we see major increase in tremor. Uh, and it goes down a little bit, mellows, and kicks back up. But if you look over the last year or so, it looks like maybe since about eh, end of 2020, these lines are getting much closer together and more frequent in tremors. So that's got to mean something. I mean, even though we only go back uh, to about 2010, you know, this, this tremor thing is kind of a newer deal in the, the uh, geologist world, but I think it plays a major important role in possibly forecasting the next big earthquake there along the Cascadia. Uh, th these tremor events are getting awfully close in the sequence here. Not quite a year time span at all uh, in between these, and now we're getting another one. Uh, when the last one was just earlier this year or halfway, um, almost halfway through the year, uh, things are definitely kicking up. I kind of want to bring up the last. Eh, look at this. This kind of brings it down a little bit more. There's April. It had a pretty good uptick. A little bit of uptick there in June, September. And now we're getting another major uptick in trimmer in October. So these intervals are getting much, much closer together. I kind of want to pull up that number and see what we got for um uh, for the total tally there since about uh when did i kick that up oh towards the end of december up until right now so it's like about 10 months or so this is a well-defined image here of the cascadia subduction zone almost the entire area is covered with trimmer uh and it's for 44,499 epicenters of trimmer uh, along the cascadia subduction zone in that time uh, and we could probably go back and look at certain dates compared to the years past, but uh, we already know looking at these graphs up here on that um, on the uh, uh, all data map here that we're getting much closer and more um, more numerous in the uh, trimmer department. But that is the Cascadia, a well-defined image of it. That's some down dip uh, activity. Uh, let's see here. Kind of gives you the image of the uh, of the uh, plates here. Juan de Fuca plate contour. I'm trying to see if there's any areas that have been missed out. C kind of right around the Eugene area. Looks like we haven't really seen too much trimmer activity. Really hasn't filled in there. Um, and I'm not for certain what that means, but. Uh, that's just a lot of trimmer. 44,000 trimmers since uh, um, since the, uh, why does this say 2009 up here? I know we kicked in, we kicked in this, right? Not for certain why it says 2009. I want to make sure we don't have um, a couple years worth of stuff here. Yeah, no, I, I was right. So we got uh, since the 28th of uh, 2021, December, 44,000. That's a lot. So we'll keep an eye on it. Um, again, I think this plays a major role in um, seeing what's going to happen before the uh, buildup or the, uh, I should say, the release of the Cascadia. It's a ticking time bomb, no doubt. In fact, I had to do a little, a little discussion on that with my geology class today. They kind of want to... Uh, wanted this to write up an essay and report about uh, the next potential disaster in the United States as far as economic loss goes and uh, loss of life and uh, you know the repair time of how uh, how long it's going to take to recover from a major earthquake or a tsunami or a volcanic eruption and I my topic was on the Cascadia subduction zone I wrote up a pretty nice essay on it and and uh, discussed all the possibilities and scenarios and the uh, the outcome it's uh definitely been a topic of a hot topic of mine for a little while been watching this cascadia for quite a long time who knows when it's going to blow or when it's going to pop 
I say blow because it's gonna be it's gonna be like a a big volcanic um, eruption, but well, without all the smoke and stuff. But it's gonna release quite a bit of energy. 9.0, 9.2. You know, they're still not a hundred percent certain on the magnitude range that happened back in 19 or uh, 1700. Uh, but it's uh, between 9.0 and 9.2. And uh, when that happens again, that's kind of it's gonna be a big deal here, folks definitely going to be a big deal so kind of wrote towards the end of the essay on what to do what you know how to be prepared you live along the oregon coast northern california coastline uh it's something that's in the future in fact the odds are a one in eight that's a pretty good shot one in eight um of this thing within the next 50 years producing a full rupture uh, a mega quake along the cascadia so that the odds are actually pretty darn good that we will see this thing um, potentially rupture in our lifetime. Who knows when it's going to be? All I know is we better be prepared. People live along the coastline. Um, there's tsunami signs, tsunami evacuation routes and whatnot all along the Oregon, Northern California coast, Washington coastlines. And that's just local. Uh, when this thing does, does go, um, we're looking at Hawaii, Japan, all the... Uh, all the areas around the Pacific plates are going to be in the danger zone. Um, you don't have to be right nearby to experience a massive tsunami, damaging tsunami. So it's going to be a day uh, unlike any other in the United States history as far as the uh, potential disaster goes following that earthquake, folks. So just be prepared. Um, see what we got for Yellowstone. That's another one. I read a couple other essays from other students and... Uh, a lot of people like to cover the Yellowstone area. I decided to skip on that one today, or uh, on that report. As uh, far as Yellowstone goes, a little bit of seismic activity here throughout the last 24 hours, but nothing, uh, nothing like we've seen in days past. In fact, it looks like the swarm is kind of dying off a little bit here. We've been seeing a little earthquake swarm here over the last, oh, five weeks or so, six weeks. There's been a little bit of activity seems like every day at least a few earthquakes and then some days more than others all right let's see uh, what else do we have i think that's about it folks um let me give a quick check of the emsc see if we're missing any earthquake activity out here uh, that the usgs may not be reporting this here is the uh, worldwide earthquakes with 4.0 and above of course if we want to zoom in then we get these smaller ones but uh, I think this here kind of gives us a good indicator of where the pressure right now is building up, and that's along the Western Pacific, uh, that teeter-totter effect, so to speak. Kind of calming down here along the North American plate, South America region. Things seem, uh, seem to be picking up here uh, pretty nicely within the um, Western Pacific. New Zealand getting in on some activity as well around the North Island. South America as well too, but not definitely not as active. Sometimes these earthquakes are uh, some older movement quakes and um, uh, very small. There's some newer ones in there, but uh, it's almost almost always moving here along these plate boundaries. But for now, the big stuff seems to be happening over here along the Western Pacific. A little bit of movement there in the Gulf as well of California. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to get out of here. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. Tomorrow is the dreaded M day, Monday. I know a lot of folks don't like that word. Yeah, I'm not too fond of it either. But hey, it's a uh, start of the new week, which means a weekend is just around the corner, right? 3.4, the latest quake there on the globe, along with that cluster of earthquakes there in South America. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there.